Max Stacy, welcome to Bit Black Boom. I think, I, I, uh, uh, hello, I think Lynn said something about uh, if you don't know who we are, then you shouldn't be here. Anybody not know who we are? Raise your hand and then get the fuck out. Hello, that's harsh. <laughs> right. Um, Dun, 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 I already blew this. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. So, uh, hello, hello. Um, first of all, get your ass to El Salvador because it's not nearly as hot as this place. Holy shit. Like, hello. it is so hot here. What the hell? What do people do here in Austin, Max? It's hotter than a crab's ass. <laughs> Oh my God, I couldn't believe this. And it's like 32 degrees inside. Yeah, 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 it's, it's quite a contrast. Like, I want to put this hoodie on because I'm so cold. So, you know, my, I, I brought this up here too because my name tag, they said, well, you know, basically we told everybody if they don't know who Max and Stacy is, then get the fuck out. So that's why nobody here raised their hand. But, so we don't need to put your name on your name tag, they said. So they put El Salvador is winning. And when I was out there, uh, and lots of people were stopping and saying, uh, you know, all sorts of stuff. But several people told me El Salvador has to win. It has to win. Yeah. 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 Right? So this is kind of the theme of what we're going to talk about is why El Salvador is winning and why we all need to make sure El Salvador wins because El Salvador is the ARC. El Salvador is Bitcoin country and we need El Salvador. Everybody needs El Salvador. Every Bitcoiner in this room needs El Salvador to win. Yeah, it's the indispensable nation at this time. So it uh, made Bitcoin legal tender and the ethos and philosophy of Bitcoin is percolated throughout the country, throughout the leadership, throughout the population, and it's becoming really the Bitcoin citadel. And it's uh, fundamentally changed the, the country and the region. And I think, for example, the president has um, decided to clean up the gangs in El Salvador. And that's a dirt, yep. You know, it, because, you know, uh, with Bitcoin, it, it demonetizes violence and it monetizes peace and love because it's unconfiscatable. I saw Tone Vey's, uh, there's Tone, and I, you know, somebody said Tone actually kind of invented the term unconfiscatable. So, yeah, okay, because I use it a lot, so I'm glad to finally give credit to the guy who came up with it. So, um, because Bitcoin is unconfiscatable and you can't confiscate Bitcoin through coercion, through violence, through force, you, uh, you have to come to the transaction with something peaceful, something somebody else wants for your Bitcoin. So it demonetizes violence. And we see this in El Salvador, they became violence intolerant. They said, we don't need violence, we're going, to get, we're going to get rid of the violence. And as a result, there's an incredible renaissance, as Stacy likes to say. You're read, you're, Max has read all the, the slides and he's like running through them all right now before we could get to them. But uh, um, So thank you for uh, coming and it was great. Whoops. Uh, no, you know, actually, while people were saying that, you know, El Salvador needs to win and you were kind of talking about this is that um, you know, it made me think, and the President Bukele has uh, tweeted along these lines of like, hard times create good, strong men, strong men create good times. And so we're in that period right now of the strong men creating good times. And that's why we need strong, you know, strong people, like not, you know, people with integrity and ethics, uh, Bitcoiners to come to El Salvador, of course. Uh, Anybody in this room who's, who's been through a few crashes or um, cycles <laughs> who have a honey badger sort of mentality, that's, that's the essence of a strong man, right? A strong person. So uh, let's start with this first slide because um, this is El Salvador is winning, right? President Bukele, I really, really 
wants to say, I told you so. Of course, when El Salvador, when President Bukele made Bitcoin legal tender in El Salvador, what did the mainstream media say? What did the financial press say? What did the U.S. press say? What did the U.S. government say? What did the IMF say? What did the World Bank say? What did everybody say? Yeah. You're going to fail, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, El Salvador President Najib Bukele scared off Wall Street by embracing Bitcoin. They say two years later, the bond rally he's overseeing is proving too lucrative to resist. Yep. The economy has benefited wildly. So the bond market, the Salvadoran government bond is uh, the best performing bond in the world uh, this past year. Right? So it's up, I think, 70%. So um, that's uh, the, the financial press has had to uh, back down, you know, and, and uh, they were wrong. And uh, Bukele, President Bukele likes to say, I told you so uh, every, every couple of weeks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and by the way, like Max and I have been in El Salvador for, we're going on two years now. It's going to be two years in a few months. Um, you know, we just raised a billion dollars for indirect investment into El Salvador for volcano energy. We're going to be mining Bitcoin using geothermal. And, you know, when Bloomberg, I spoke to Bloomberg, a journalist on you know, Zoom, and I to they said, you're not going to be able to raise a billion dollars. And I said, no, we already have it. Mm -hmm. We have it. This was a year before we announced it. And he's like, no, you don't. And I'm like, I am telling you, we have it. <laughs> like, no. And they ran a headline, they failed. The investors are scared off. I was like, what the fuck? I told you the opposite. And sure enough, uh, we always had it. I, I literally told him so. Yeah, we uh, said so the billion dollar volcano energy project is up and running. Um, we've got uh, geothermal mining that we're tapping into. And we're going to geographically decentralize the Bitcoin mining around the world. So uh, part of the mission there is to have some hash rate going in El Salvador, which is the Bitcoin arc, uh, to give some, some more robustness to the geographical decentralization of Bitcoin mining. And um, so they said it, everything that everybody says that can't be done, it, you know, we, we do it. We do it easily. We do it gracefully. I, I think one of the greatest things about President Bukele is that he just does things very, in in a way that's very uh, graceful and he, very. Uh, he's just having fun because he knows what he's doing, uh, which is I think unique in amongst world leaders. Well, actually, that's a good point because President Bukele makes it look easy, but this is proof of work. You know, this is hard money and it's hard like it's not as easy as he makes it look so we're going to uh, talk a little bit about that about how to keep that first mover advantage you know of course uh, Ben Franklin when they wrote the US Constitution and famously somebody a woman asked him hey uh, Mr. Franklin what do we have and he goes you have a republic if you can keep it well we have a first mover advantage if you can keep it um, this is the same for all Bitcoiners, right? You have Bitcoin, you have the perfect money if you can keep it. And the longer you're in it, like maybe it gets easier now, but it certainly was hard in 2011, 12, 13, 14 with hacks and uh, securing your Bitcoin and, and uh, shit coins coming along. Like if you still have Bitcoin after, you know, any amount of time, like you've, you deserve it. Like you've held it, you've kept it. And so how, how to maintain, like you declare Bitcoin legal tender, you're Bitcoin country, and you have the first mover advantage if you can keep it. So how do, how do you get all the best and the brightest? How do you get the highest, you know, ethical companies in this space, i.e. Bitcoin, <laughs> just Bitcoin companies, and not all the shitcoin and crypto companies? So. You know, when Max and I first arrived, what, you know, we were looking around and, you know, this is before we were like advisors or doing anything for the president. It was like, what can we do here as Bitcoiners? And you now as 
being in Bitcoin for a long time, but also like a different stage in our life. Some other, you know, younger people are at a different point. They might have to work more or do other stuff. So at first we were like, okay, we've had VC funds and we were early investors back in like 2012 and a lot of the exchanges in, in the Bitcoin space because that's what was needed back then. Um, now it seems it's like a space with a lot of uh, companies, but back then it was like, it was Mt. Gox <laughs> and Intrasango <laughs> and uh, one or two others that blew up and disappeared with everybody's money. But, uh, w you know, so we were early investors. So we thought like, let's uh, start investing, mm -hmm. right? And startups in El Salvador in the Bitcoin space. And then we were like, where are all the Bitcoin engineers? And we're like, there were none there. So then we'll, we'll get into what we've done that with Kubo Plus and education projects and, um, and, and from there. But what do you have to say? About that? Yeah, so when we arrived, you know, our instinct was to do a VC fund, which we set up. And then it was clear that there was um, a need for engineers. We wanted homegrown engineers and we wanted to develop the talent there. We knew the talent was there. So um, there was a call out. We made a, some uh, help with the government to essentially canvass the country and to put the call out to every university, really, every student, that if they're interested in becoming Bitcoin developers and Bitcoin programmers, to um, come to this uh, program that really started. I don't know if you've gotten into with the Jimmy Song program. Yeah, we're going to get to that in a few slides. Right. But I just want so. You know, when we're looking at El Salvador and how to maintain this first mover advantage when we first arrived there, you know, um, what we understood and what we knew as being Bitcoiners were, uh, first of all, Renaissance 2.0, Bitcoin maximalism. You could only do this, you can only win. The only path to winning was Bitcoin maximalism, right? You could do shitcoinery like Dubai, but, or Hong Kong, like all the, the space to compete for those 25, 30,000, whatever, how many ever shit coins there are, that's a race to the bottom, right? But if you could be not only effortlessly cool, like President Bukele, and have, you know, the coming out of the hard times that created the strong men and having that um, transformation of your society that, uh, is so unique, it's such a unique moment in history. For me, why I called it Renaissance 2.0 is the same thing with Renaissance 1.0. Is if, when I look at the history of what happened to Florence, you know, the, the Florin came first, the perfect money at that time that the Florin represented in, in terms of a standardization of the weight of, of and, the, and the confidence of merchants throughout North Africa and other parts of the world to accept the florin, that the perfect money led to the Renaissance as more and more wealth came to Florence and participated in it and built this economy. And I figured a year and a half ago, two years ago, that this same thing could happen mm -hmm. in El Salvador. So, you know, from that you know, foundation of having Bitcoin legal tender, a great leader, you know, the equivalent of a Lorenzo the Magnificent in Florence, that we could attract those equivalents of the, the, the best merchants in the world, i.e. the Bitcoin, uh, the best Bitcoiners and the best Bitcoin companies. Right, right. Bitcoiners are born twice, right? They're, when they buy Bitcoin, they become a Bitcoiner, then they become Bitcoin maximalists really the second yeah. birth, right? That guy well, was just reborn. <laughs> just sprung into existence spontaneously out of the womb of Satoshi. Dumping you under the water. It's finally, he's gestating in there for nine minutes and then the block just happened. And he burst out of Satoshi's womb. Because Satoshi's woke, so of course he has a vagina. Of course, let's not be kidding ourselves. He's an hermaphrodite. <laughs> and uh, what the fuck was I talking about? Yeah. I can move Where to the I? next slide oh. if you want. Oh yeah, Bitcoin maximalism. <laughs> you're, trapped. You're, you're born twice, you see. So you're born as a Bitcoin. And you know, as Jesus said, 
the path narrows. You know, people say, why are you so toxic, you fucking asshole? To me, they say that. That's I, me. That's like what I say. And I say, good morning. <laughs> and they say, why aren't you more accommodating? Why aren't you open the floodgates and welcome all? Because the path narrows, as and Jesus would say, the, the, you, the path toward maximalism gets narrower, doesn't widen, because you have to come to grips with yourself. The maximalism is to know yourself, which is the most horrifying ex experience ever, anyone can have, to know yourself. We spend our entire life avoiding that confrontation. But with Bitcoin, you must face yourself to become a true maximalist and to prepare yourself for the Bitcoin singularity, which is coming soon. Okay. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, because I see the time, like, oh, dream. is flying. What's dream. the next slide? TikTok, next block, Max. TikTok, next slide. So, Enlightenment 2.0. Life, liberty, property. Um, going back to the first slide, or the first uh, concept of, it, you know, we have a republic if you can keep it, is we have the shining city on the hill is now El Salvador. Life, liberty, and property are protected. And it's really dramatic, the end of that at the same time in, in the United States. We all see the headlines, even MSNBC and CNN have to report on it now of the mass looting events across California. I, I doubt that would ever happen in, in Texas. With a, I don't think it would, uh, uh, you know, it would result too well. Uh, you know, the consequences would be uh, felt in a bullet hole probably uh, if anybody did that here. But that was very important. And I, and you know, when Max and I arrived, this was before the the war against gangs and now after it like you do see i mean i i knew when we went there that we had the renaissance 2.0 coming and i knew it was going to be a huge transformation but at that time i was worried because there were vast areas of the country that were occupied by gangs that took 20 30 percent of everybody's income by force uh, you know, we, we, the first seven months we lived in a hotel in San Salvador and all the staff, the waiters and stuff like that lived in Soyapongo mostly, uh, some in Apopa and some in Ilopongo that were gang occupied areas and they would have to give over money when they got off the bus to the gangs. Um, and then like we got the feedback as the, the you know, securing the, the blessings of liberty happened. Like as the, the gangs were eradicated you saw it in the people we were interacting with every single day that uh, they were they had more money suddenly their their life their liberty and their property were secured and they we saw that happen and max and i were there on the ground there were quite a few bitcoiners you saw it on bitcoin twitter who were like oh president bukele is a dictator and um you know that he's evil and all this sort of stuff but we saw actual Salvadorans who had been under occupation by these violent gangsters mm -hmm. being liberated. Right. Well, you know, this is an interesting conversation about, you know, libertarianism, anarcho-capitalism, Bitcoinism, Shintoism, Christianity, Starbucks, and gonads. And uh, what I mean by that is um, government is at least, at the very least, at the very minimalist least, is to provide security. This is a job. That's what Bastiat said. Right, right. This is something a government does. So um, this is the minimal functionality of the Salvadoran government is to provide security. So that's what they did. They they got rid of the the gangs and they protected the human rights of seven million Salvadorans. And um, I don't, I'm not clear why this is such a big issue amongst those in the Wall Street Journal and other publications who would characterize the guy who cleaned up the, the terrorism and the gangs as he himself being in the wrong. 
No, um, but then that, that's a publication coming out of a country where looting has been legalized. So I'm not surprised that they've got the whole thing upside down. Well, as Bastiat, Frederick Bastiat said in his pamphlet, The Law, when plunder becomes a way of life for a group of men in a society, over the course of time, they create for themselves a legal system that justifies it and a moral code that glorifies it. And that's what you have here, and that's what we see ending in El Salvador. And so it is part of the, the great, I, you know, I had called it, it was the greatest rebrand in history, but it's more than just a rebrand, it's a transformation, and you see it, and it was important uh, for that to happen. So, you know, we're on the ground, and we're in El Salvador, and El Salvador is winning, and it's winning because of these choices and these decisions that President Bukele made, and, you know, I, you know, it, it's important, like, when people ask, like, which next country to hyper-Bitcoinize like this, and I had said at Bitcoin uh, 2023 in Miami that uh, I don't think there will be another one, like, because you need, like, President Bukele is a once in 500 year sort of leader, like, you need that sort of guy who has who is actually a leader if you if you research like what 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 makes a great leader they have to have uh principles they have to have a vision they have to have the um the strength to withstand like to to maintain that vision to like persuade not only the population but to have faith in their own vision because when the imf when the u.s government when all these like Huge, the New York Times, the Washington Post, like we were there when they were like descending on the country, writing all sorts of horrible stuff. It's like a lot of pressure, but to have somebody able to withstand that and to stay strong and stay, you know, like maintain their conviction mm -hmm. and their faith and their vision. You know, there aren't very many leaders in the world and you can see that, like they don't have that ability. And I think Max, you always say like, you know, you don't change Bitcoin, Bitcoin changes you. And it's part of the whole process that we're seeing in El Salvador with the president, with the country, and with the people moving there. Yeah, so making Bitcoin legal tender was part of the equation, and the other part of the equation is to keep the shitcoins out. So there had to be a barrier to entry for shitcoins. So there was the new securities law that was introduced that effectively says anything that's not Bitcoin is a security. And so during the last year when Do Kwan blew up, when Celsius blew up, when all these shit coins blew Sam up, Bankman -Fried. Sam Bankman Freed, all these things blew up, nothing like this happened in El Salvador because there were already laws in place that prevented shit coins from coming in by saying that if, if you're not Bitcoin, you're security and go see the securities regulator. And of course, the cost of going through the securities regulator was too high for a shitcoin, so they didn't do it. It was an effective barrier to, the, to keep the shitcoins out. And um, so that's well, two, two parts of the equation. We don't need those. Uh, those are weak people, right? We don't, the, the, the good times only happen because of the strong men. We're still in that process. <laughs> like, we need to have all the good high ethics people there and uh, contributing. It's a semi-permeable membrane, right? So the, the Bitcoiners, the maximalists can get in, right? And, but the shitcoiners, there's a very, very high barrier to entry. And it's been very effective so far in keeping them out. If you ever show up at the airport in San Salvador, Max is there, <laughs> like uh, see, uh, checking everybody, to see if they have Doge or whatever shitcoin in their pocket. Yeah. Um, but we only have, uh, uh, you know, we're coming down to the time we have to talk about Kubo Plus. So we have two slides here, Kubo Plus. Oh, you recognize that guy, right? The hat? Yeah. That's Jimmy Song. So in that photo there, you see him with a lot of young Salvadoran guys. Uh, there were two girls who also, well, one girl made it to, that, uh, to the final 12 that got to Jimmy Song's class. So um, I think this was the most... Um, amazing thing like this turned out to be such a huge success and it you know it makes me cry really to see that we were part of this so when we were there from the very beginning 
we started the VC and then we realized we needed um, the devs because we wanted, like, they had to participate too. Salvadoran people had to benefit from the decisions that the president had made. And we knew good times were coming. And immediately I called Jimmy Song. I reached out to him. That was in uh, January or February 2022. And then we arranged uh, for, uh, you know, a programming Bitcoin course in July of 2022. And, you know, that's two or three days. We had uh, seven students, the Jimmy Song Seven. Um, but it wasn't enough. Like, I, it, I knew, like, we needed something bigger. And this only came about because we were still building, like, a, a foundation and an infrastructure for a Bitcoin citadel, for Bitcoin country. And we uh, had opened a Bitcoin embassy in Lugano, Switzerland. And the reason why we opened a Bitcoin embassy in Lugano, Switzerland, were, like, some of our partners, including... Uh, Bitfinex, Paolo Arduino, uh, Fulger Ventures there who are really hardcore uh, Bitcoiners. Fulger invests a huge amount into Lightning. Um, and working with them was the real spark, right? Because Fulger, you know, Oleg at Fulger has a huge long history of um, academic excellence. Like he's transformed universities actually in Moscow Polytech, for example, he said he, he came into this project and not only did we find all the funding from Lugano, because it's a really expensive project that we've done, but they got all of the, the, the top coders in the world, like Peter Todd, Jimmy Song, Giacomo Zucco, you know, uh, Lisa Nyga. We had all these people participate, come to El Salvador and train the best of the best of El Salvador to be a Bitcoin and Lightning devs. Yeah, big shout out to Jimmy Song. There's uh, a local Texan. You know, that was the first call, you know, and uh, now there's seven young programmers in El Salvador wearing cowboy hats. Now they, they, we, we now have 21. We have now 21. there's 21. And um, there's a huge um, bet that if the song, if the message went out there, to that there was this fantastic program that that people that these young uh, devs would show up and they did and so this is really the at the beginning of uh, it's, it's that little um, piece in the oyster that becomes the pearl right you know this is the beginning of the formation of a pearl of a, of a volcano you know alley or uh, of, of a Silicon Valley volcano Valley El Salvador homegrown talent and it was like, it was very funny because it was don't trust verify, right? So we, um, we went to a university, Don Bosco in uh, San Salvador, in Soyapango, and they, you know, I think it's like a, a Christian university, private university that they have some uh, computer science course. And we asked them, they, they emailed all of their students to invite them to participate in this. And there were forum boards apparently, like Facebook pages, saying this must be a scam. Like, there's no way this is real. Uh, Safe Dean and Moose, by the way, also came over and taught uh, the students uh, on the, the, you know, the philosophy and economics of Bitcoin. Um, but there was a lot of doubt. And when we met the parents at graduation, <laughs> they all thought, they, several of them said that we thought like this was, you were gonna ask us for money, like that there was some con at the end of this because it seemed too good to be real. Um, but these are the good times. These are the strong men that will create the good, the good times. The, this is the Renaissance 2.0, the Enlightenment 2.0. These are the people, these are the kids that are going to maintain it. So they've all graduated and they're now uh, getting internships for the next few months. Some of them are going to Lugano uh, for the Bitcoin conference there and for further um, you know, education there as well. Yeah, and um, you know, I just uh, again emphasize uh, that everyone should come visit us in El Salvador because it's really a country that's been liberated from 30, 40 years of 
with civil war and then gang war. And people are just out of their house and they're partying and the, the atmosphere is fun and it's joyous and it's liberating and it's, uh, it's a great change of pace. If you ever want to overcome feeling like, oh my God, things are rotten, come to El Salvador and feel like a rebirth. And speaking of rebirth, even Reuters. Reuters has some of the worst headlines ever about El Salvador. They were one of the biggest fudsters on earth about El Salvador. And here's a headline, El Salvador partnership to build $1 billion Bitcoin mining farm. So $1 billion foreign direct investment into El Salvador, that's 3% of GDP in one investment into El Salvador. So this is a sort of transformation that's happening. Max is the chairman of Volcano Energy. Um, and that's just the start. And we know this is the heart of, I mean, we're talking about Bitcoin mining. Uh, probably for Texas, this is like, oh, that's puny. <laughs> okay, we know you have massive uh, Bitcoin mining operations here, but come to El Salvador, you know, uh, join us there. And, uh, w you know, we encourage more of you to actually come and build with us. I, I have a booth outside uh, as a, you know, with a um, pamphlet for how to move to El Salvador, how to move your business there, how to come join us, how to uh, participate in Bitcoin, <coughs> Bitcoin country. Because El Salvador has to win and El Salvador wins with Bitcoiners. Yep, and I think the Miss Universe contest is coming to El Salvador. Uh, they've allowed me to enter um, for obvious reasons. Um, the best legs of Bitcoin. I think no one would argue that. So very excited. I root for me to win a Miss Universe. Oh. What else? Quick, quick around, uh, find quick, out. Last two. Um, and this is why we want Bitcoiners to come because fuck around, find out. Uh, that was CAR because of course Central African Republic didn't make Bitcoin legal tender. They were the second one to do that. And that didn't turn out quite well because of course certain shitcoiners and private jets showed up and um, introduced Sango coin and the whole thing fell apart very rapidly. So luckily we never took that, went down that path and uh, because we have a once in 500 year sort of leader, but you know, we welcome everybody to come join us in Bitcoin country. Yeah, everyone's welcome, come on down. And vote for Max for Miss Universe. Vote for me. <laughs> Grandpa, why do you have so much Bitcoin? Well, it all started in the year 2023 when I attended a conference called BitBlock Boom. What's BitBlock Boom, Grandpa? It was a conference where people talked about Bitcoin. This was way back when we used something called the US dollar for money. What? Bitcoin wasn't always the world's money? If it weren't for great speakers at BitBlock Boom like Jimmy Song, Adam Curry, and Preston Pish, we'd all be living in pods and eating bugs. Instead, I was able to avoid fiat enslavement and secure generational wealth. F***ing legend. Be the legend your grandchildren deserve. Experience the best Bitcoin conference out there and join the Bitcoin revolution. BitBlock Boom, the only conference for true Bitcoin maximalists. Book your tickets today at bitblockboom.com and use the code BBB1 for a special discount.